Fibrinolytics or thrombolytics are drugs used to break down blood clots or thrombi. Remember that these drugs are used once there is thrombus formation. They are not used prophylactically. They can be used as IV bolus or IV infusion form for short-term emergency management of coronary thrombosis in acute MI, which shows improvement or decrease in mortality in more than 60% of the patients if uh, the therapy started within three hours post-MI, DVT, pulmonary embolism, and ischemic stroke. Now remember that stroke can also be of the hemorrhagic type uh, in which if you give fibrinolytics or thrombolytics, it can worsen the situation. So first you need to do an MRI to confirm that the stroke is due to uh, thrombus formation. In order to understand the mechanism of action of fibrinolytics and thrombolytics, we need to understand that whenever there is endothelial injury or stasis, what happens is that apart from the pro-coagulation and pro-platelet aggregation factors, molecular breaks such as tissue plasminogen activator are also um, released to keep the coagulation or platelet aggregation in check. This tissue plasminogen activator converts plasminogen into plasmin. Plasmin is basically a fibrinolytic and it breaks down fibrin and rapidly dissolves the blood clot. Now the drugs that we will use as fibrinolytics or thrombolytics will potentiate the effects of tissue plasminogen activator and thus the production of plasmin. How they act is by catalyzing the formation of endogenous fibrinolytic plasmin, which is a serin protease from its precursor. We need to remember that plasminogen is of two types. One is the free circulating form and the other one is fibrin bound form. We know that in any type of tissue injury, for example, the cardiac muscle ischemia, the tissue can remain viable for about three hours. So we need to start the thrombolytic therapy in under three hours and most preferably in within the first hour because after that, once the tissue is dead, there is no use to reperfuse the organ because it's dead, it can't be revived. Although you can cause extra damage by causing oxidative stress and the production of reactive oxygen species in the surrounding tissues and thus causing reperfusion injury. So one thing we learn is that fibrinolytic or thrombolytic therapy is only beneficial if it is given abruptly following injury. The drugs used as fibrinolytics or thrombolytics are drugs that basically do the job of tissue plasminogen activator or even we have recombinant forms of TPA which will convert plasminogen into active plasmin and that, that will dissolve the clot. We'll discuss three of them here. One is streptokinase, second is urokinase, third is alteplase or belonging to the same family are retoplase or tenecteplase as well. We'll discuss alteplase here only. Coming to streptokinase, we need to know that it is basically an enzyme produced by the streptococci which uh, is involved in the beta hemolysis of the blood. Urokinase is basically from human fetal kidney cell origin and alteplase, retoplase or tenecteplase is basically the recombinant TPA form. Streptokinase has an indirect action on plasminogen and it actually acts on both the free and fibrin bound form of plasminogen forms streptokinase and plasminogen complex which exposes active sites and thus cleaves the plasminogen to active plasmin. Streptokinase has an indirect action, urokinase has a direct action and so does alteplase. As I said, Streptokinase will act on both the free and fibrin bound form of plasminogen while alteplase only acts on fibrin found, uh, bound form of plasminogen thus it is more clot specific and there is less or no bleeding as its side effects. As we know that streptokinase is a bacterial product thus it is strongly antigenic in humans and thus will cause fever and if uh, streptokinase is uh, administered the second time the body will have produced antibodies against it and there will be degradation of streptokinase by the antibodies so there will be no effect and also we should not give them in patients who had recent 
uh, streptococcal infection, they will also have antibodies against it. Urokinase is given patients in which streptokinase has been used uh, once. Alteplase is not antigenic and it is not destroyed because no antibodies are produced against it. It is rapid acting but has a short half-life and it is very very potent than the other two. Streptokinase as is a, it is a bacterial product it is not expensive while alteplase is very very expensive and thus it is very beneficial but it is very expensive. Now the side effects of both streptokinase and urokinase will include bleeding because these drugs are used in older patients with uh, diabetes and hypertension and cardiac disorders. So these patients already have atherosclerotic plaques in the small vessels of the brain and the heart. So fibrinolytics can actually cause these uh, plaques to rupture and cause bleed, intracerebral bleed or even thrombosis and embolism. So this is a very important side effect of both of these. Streptokinase, in addition to that, will cause allergic reactions like fever, chills, rashes, and rarely anaphylactic reaction. Urokinase will cause bleed but no allergic reaction, while alteplase will not cause bleed and not cause allergic reactions as well. Now, in cases of overdose of fibrinolytics or excessive bleeds, we use antifibrinolytics which will inhibit the conversion of plasminogen to plasmin and fibrinolysis will be inhibited thus. Two important drugs are involved in this. One is EACA that is epsilon amino caproic acid and the second one is tranexamic acid which is more often used in hospitals and is more potent than EACA. Now both of them can be used to control bleeding, uh, excessive bleeding due to excessive fibrinolytic therapy or following surgery like prostatectomy, tonsillectomy, tooth extraction, etc. That's all about fibrinolytics and antifibrinolytics.